Hello, everybody. Another episode of Two Chaps Many Cultures. This is episode 100 and is it 67? I think so. Yes. <laughs> what if I told you that I don't like what you're telling me? What if I told you that I love what you're telling me and inside, deep inside of me, you'll never know that I'm not really a fan of what you just presented to me? What if people object to you and it's either rubbing you the wrong way or you'll never know that they had a doubt about you? That's a whole loaded topic, and we're going to dig into it now. Hey, mate. Hello. <laughs> I object. Okay. I can see. <laughs> you're you're on that. <laughs> this is the show about the business of culture and how culture affects our business. My name is Christian. The other good looking guy to the other side is Brett. We are the two chaps and we talk about many cultures. And you're here because somebody told you about our program and you're wondering how come I've missed the other 166 episodes. In any case, welcome. We're glad you're here. Let us know where in the world you are. Let us know where you're dialing in from. And those of you who are repeat visitors, repeat customers, welcome back, everybody. Glad to have you. Brett, is it not a wonderful day today? It is a wonderful day. Um, and uh, I'm, I don't have any objection at all to the wonderful weather we're having here. Well, good. You know, I mean, we did see some good weather. Now it's yeah not so good so maybe I should object I don't know I'm just I'm just so how do I know if you're objecting or not how do I well, how will I ever know whether you agree with me or deep down you hold these lingering thoughts of I don't like this guy good question I'll, I'll throw in a joke <laughs> oh so that means you don't want me to laugh you want me to you want to interrupt me with your joke and to think about how stupid I am is that what you're doing. No, 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 no. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, this is, this is an interesting topic because, you know, if, for those who have been here before in the past few weeks, we've instigated or instigated, in, 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 initiated. initiated a process by which each week we offer you a resource, a tangible resource, something you can actually print out. And we will do that today. We promise you later. But it's kind of linking um, a what some might say a nuanced version of each uh, uh, of the same topic. But we've talked about it. Uh, we've talked about conflict. We've talked about disagreements. We've talked about all these kind of things. So someone might say, "Well, objections isn't it the same thing?" Well, it kind of is, but it is perhaps um, just another small nuance when you're dealing with global uh, with the global um, you know, counterparts where you have to ascertain, first of all, what an objection is and the way it, in which it's projected to you or, pro, or, or presented to you and interpret that through the lens of the culture of the people that you're dealing with. And, of course, understand your own culture and what how you project your own objection. So it's an important topic, one that's just uh, building on what we've done before in the past couple of weeks, exactly. I would say. Because some people may argue that an objection is something that is a strong response and that is negative, and we want to avoid it if possible. And others will tell you, well, an objection is simply showing that the person you're interacting with is actively listening to you and thinking about what you have to tell them. And they may not be in full agreement yet. Hmm. Those are the three letters that matter. They may not be in agreement yet. <laughs> so that means they give you pushback. They oppose you a little bit and say, well, I'm not sure if I'm there yet. So that gives you a chance to clarify your position, to explain yourself in a way that your counterpart actually understands or resonates with or can relate to. Does it mean that 
all and any objection can be overcome? Probably not. You'll meet people that will simply disagree with you, either because they have fundamentally different values or different belief systems, or because they simply don't like you, or maybe they don't trust you. So how we present this, how we present our objection, our opposition, our doubts and questions is a bit different ar across the world. And in, in my home culture in Central Europe, objections are typically raised very straightforward, up out in the open, sometimes even in a, in a way that may appear a bit adversarial to some or, or controversial. Um, the goal being to let everybody know, hey, I listen, I hear what's going on, here's what this does to me, and my own thoughts and experiences lead me to say, not just yet, give me more information, or I think you're wrong. So in that case, in my culture, it's pretty clear when somebody says no, or when somebody has an objection. What cultures could you think of, Brett, that don't do that as openly? Well, uh, Asian cultures, um, there are some African cultures, Middle Eastern culture, more relate, you know, the relationship based cult cultures or the face cultures where you've got uh, any objection, any vocal objection can be seen as um, maybe dishonoring the authority of the people that are putting the information in front of you. So um, th this is, again, just as effective in, in its setting and can be productive in its outcome. So um, I think that if you if you think about um, like what you just described there, preparing information and giving somebody information ahead of time in in which you can draw out objections beforehand, so that you can come prepared in any presentations, be it a sales presentation or a negotiation, where you can come prepared with the any strategies, any suggestions that you can offer in terms of overcoming those objections. Um, that gives you a step up, gives you a leg up, gives you right. gives you a sense that you've got, and also gives those people that you're interacting with the sense that, well, this person has actually, you know, she has actually prepared and and considered my objection, and uh, you know, and and as we've said before, the objection may not be just a complete disagreement. It it is it may be a tool. It's a tool to help you clarify that um, for the other person. That you're following the rules. We see this in courtrooms. I'm not a lawyer, but I uh, but I look at you know I watch. I don't play one on TV, but I watch TV. I watch lawyers on TV, and <clears throat> a lot of this is about you know I object, Your Honor, is about clarifying rules. Um, mm -hmm. There are certain rules and things that that happen in the courtroom that uh, I guess each side wants to clarify that it's being followed and respected in the process. And that's why you have a judge to either affirm or deny the objection. So um, that, that's kind of an in the moment uh, example of that, where it has to be negotiated pretty much on the spot. So for, for different cultures, this is gonna look different and you have to be prepared in those different ways. And I would argue that the, the linguists and, and the psychologists out there may, may question me on this. However, I think there's a there's a a strong pattern when we talk a, a behavioral communicative pattern when we talk about objections. Um, objections are part of a decision making process, so we want people to take a side or not take a side, but take a decision, um, make a make a value judgment that allows them to take a next step. And in sales, if you're doing business across cultures, that might just be getting that signature on the contract or um, getting the number on, on the purchase order. They're not ordering 10, they're ordering 30 of the items that you sell to your clients. So to, to push or to, to elicit a decision, maybe that's the more elegant way to say, uh, eliciting a decision will come with objections. That is part of human interaction because we're sending a message to a recipient who may or may not receive it the way we intended to send it. We talked about this intent and impact before on one of the episodes, was it last week or the week before? Mm -hmm. So objections are part of that process. Objections are not a negative per se. An objection is a signal for us to recognize, oh, 
there's not a there's not sufficient data there's not sufficient information for the other person to make a decision right so yeah. it's upon us and that's what, what what i like what you said Brett, that if you come prepared with as many arguments to handle any objection that may come your way that is a very elegant way to preempt that in a way um it's often referred to as as a mind reading quote unquote mind reading technique because the other person will think oh how come brett thought i was going to have that objection he's already got an answer did he read my mind no he did not he simply played through the possible scenarios what might could happen and what information should i have handy in case it does happen right mm. yeah they I, having just gone through the process of buying a car I, I i did some research probably more research than i've ever done before and what i was interested in is there is a lot of inform information out there about how salespeople are trained to handle objections because in those cases the objections may not be the, the objections that a customer brings up may not be the actual overlying truth of why they're objecting to it there could be other things behind there could be somebody else in the family or the organization that has to make a decision so therefore you have to clarify <clears throat> are they the decision maker that have the power to write the check and actually sign the contract the other thing is there might be just other things that are that for, for a particular person might be embarrassing either they can't afford something or there's a, there, there's something that's just not ticking all the boxes but they will put up another objection which sounds like it doesn't relate to anything and right. there are certain i was fascinated with certain tricks that that car are tricks i call them tricks because we have this bad we have this bad perception of car salesmen that a lot of them are, are, are very sleazy what? And uh, some of them Actually, are. So in many cases, <laughs> some of them are. But I've, uh, I guess that there is so much information now available to the client, to the customers, to the public, to, 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 to Joe and Jane public out there, that a lot of these processes now, the, the, the veil has been lifted. And of course, you've got plenty of opportunities to, as an informed consumer, to turn up and offer these objections. Still, some uh, you know use old fashioned tactics like getting you to say yes a lot to rather inane questions so that in your mind you're saying yes to basically the whole deal that's when right, you're... Brett. yes isn't it yeah that's, yep, right. that's right absolutely yeah yeah that's right Brett. yeah uh, you got it and and and, it, and it's just like uh, there are all these little tricks there. and when you go and do the process as somebody who walked around many many car lots you go oh yeah okay here it comes right here and now and now i'm armed with the ability to say okay now but in this case i'm I'm prepared to actually give my objections in an abject way. And uh, oftentimes, this is how, this is what I noticed. Uh, oftentimes, the salespeople were not even really aware that I was objecting. They were so focused on their yes. And then when I walked out, maybe they, you know, they, they could have had an opportunity really to overcome my objections and they didn't they were just focused on their memorize certain phrases right. right and that is that i think that that's i think will lead us to the critical part of objection handling a we talk about how you recognize them or how you become more mindful that you may actually not have recognized the objection yet especially with cultures that communicate in a less direct high context manner or cultures that can be very hierarchical and they may see you as a person of influence authority higher up the the ranks so they will not openly object to you but they might object to somebody at their peer level and you you will also find cultures that are more relationship based as brett said earlier faith saving where the trust is built around knowing one another and not completing transactions or tasks that would create this mutual trust. So there's multiple dimensional cultural layers that will teach you or that we help our clients teach them to recognize how do you recognize the objection? How do you find the nuance in the behavior? That may not always be self-explanatory at first. However, experienced global professionals develop a, a knack for that or a let's say a sixth sense around that now the the i think the critical piece in this is do you listen properly and if the salesperson that brett um had interacted with had listened with intent and with 
the the desire to receive information and relate to Brett, he would have or he or she would have not missed the opportunity. Too often people listen only with a desire to respond with their prefabricated agenda. So if you want to learn how to react or overcome objections, I think your first job is to listen intently and recognize what are the triggers, what are the reasons for the other person's pushback. Is it because your product does not fit their budget? They may not have the money. Hmm. Is it perhaps not the right time for them? They don't feel a need or a demand for whatever it is you offer right now. And this doesn't have to be a sales process. This could be food, right? Hey, um, I, I just ate this pasta. Here, have a plate. No, I'm not hungry. I just ate an arrow. So there's your objection. So there is no way to overcome that because they just ate, right? Um, is it um, because they don't trust you? They may not buy from you. They won't like your food, the pasta you just cooked, because they never ate food made by you. And maybe they don't know you well enough to think that you might be a capable chef, right? So um, what would be other reasons why people say no or ha at least voice their doubts or, or retreat from a decision-making situation? Well, they, uh, you just... This brought up a memory of me even in, a, in all these uh, negotiations, in these situations, because it's a, a process, I guess, that, that happened a lot where the salesperson I'm talking to would go and get a manager. This is a, this is a classic example where they're bringing in somebody of authority because you're so important that you get to talk to the manager. Yeah. Now, from my perspective, you know, from a, from a very egalitarian perspective of, of an Australian, this just adds that just adds con uh, confusion to me you know i'm not like i don't i don't want this other person here you know why, why yeah, are you because i just built rapport with you why you're bringing a new person to the yeah i mean now i've got to do all this again this is ridiculous are you not the person i can talk to and it's and it and it was just and i actually said this to one of the salesmen directly i said my objection is we went through a whole process we went through a discussion we looked at the the product we we, we came up with some base agreements and then you brought somebody in to as like an authority, like now I'm special, now I can talk to this. And, and quite frankly, you've lost me. And I walked out and I went, you know what? When you guys get it sorted out, <laughs> you know, well, so there wasn't that listening. There wasn't that. that, that you, did that, you buy from the dealership? Did, did they get your money in the end? <clears throat> no. Yeah, I figured. All right. Absolutely. The, the, one, the ones that got my money was when I dealt with one person. And that was it. And the guy, from start to finish, except right at the end when they take you into the place where they try to sell you all the bells and whistles, which I objected to, I said, I don't want any of that. And, you know, I guess it was their process. But this was the fact that it was just one person. So for me, that that fitted. That that was the process, right? And well, for, and for, for, for people that come from more hierarchical cultures, this, hey, there, there is the, the, the big kahuna stepping down from yeah. his corner office in the 78th floor just to talk to you, that may very well tip the scales or overcome the objection that may have been there in the first place, right? It really depends on who is your kind about who you're dealing with. Yeah. And how well are you, have you been listening to the person you're trying to convince. Listen, folks, we're not simply talking about sales because sales mm -hmm. may be the, the prototypical example of a decision-making process, right? We're, we're selling people every day, every hour, I guess, or all the time, sweeping generalizations. You sell your spouse on going on a date. You sell your children on taking out the trash. You sell yourself on getting out of bed, even though you feel like laying down for another 30 minutes. We all either uh, elicit decisions within ourselves or we try to uh, initiate decisions in other people in order for a common good, ideally for a win, win, win. It's a win for me, it's a win for Brett, and it's a win for the entire ecology in which we operate. So decision making is part of our everyday behavior sales is simply the the pinnacle or or that that agenda point that has received 
so much attention because it's a for a lot of people it's a bottom line relevant breadwinning activity right without mm. that no food on the table so overcoming objections may be super important in a sales context it is also important in your everyday social life where we're going to go eat right or are we going to stay in are we watching this or are we watching that would you like water or juice would you like coffee or tea all of these are decision making processes you're selling somebody on your suggestion right and you will either get full buy-in or you will get doubt or an objection and how you handle that depends on how well you listen how good you're well i'm coming back to it how well established is your trust with that other person i think once you once you're past the direct indirect communication whether you're past the hierarchy low hierarchy uh, flat portion it boils down to how much do people trust you and there are different ways to earn that trust what how, how do i earn your trust brett well you know you you do listen i like the, the the base you started that you do listen and i'm often drawn to actually calling people out and say you need to because in a very transactional way a lot of people are just saying they are anticipating what they think my objection is so they're stopping me and they're talking over the top of me and i say and i do literally say this please stop i'm talking at the moment i have something to say to you it frustrates me that i have to do that here but i understand why they're doing it but i'm just trying to gently to you know bring them to the point where they may, they need to understand that i guess for me i need to be heard i need to be acknowledged right i need to i need you to maybe do the the, the correct detective work to understand what my actual objection is right All right I, I, I might put somebody through the ringer in that way or if I really trust you and you've given me that respect I'm going to tell you what my objection is clearly right and if you don't acknowledge it then I'm going to be you know I'm, I'm kind of go well you weren't listening right it's a kind of a it loops back on itself right so so that, do, do you trust me because uh, we have worked well together before and we we like the way we work and we we had results together and we recognize okay if i do this with that guy there is a high level of predictability that the outcome will be in 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 my favor or in a way that i would like it hence i trust you so is is our i'm i'm, I'm oversimplifying is the relationship or is the trust built upon the fact that we've done tasks together well or is the trust because we laugh together. I laughed at your jokes. You laughed at my silly jokes. That ain't funny. Maybe we had a drink or a meal together, and and we we gotten to know each other on a more personal level. Is that what creates the trust? So task or relationship, right? Either yeah. way, as you build, you want to find out. You want to read communication that's more than just the words. People communicate not just with the vocabulary. They communicate with the tone of voice, they communicate with their body language, they communicate with the words they don't say or the particular choice of words in a certain situation, right? Mm. So unless we become expert listeners and expert interpreters of human behavior, the objection handling will be very difficult. Yeah, I like the hierarchy part. I just, it just came to mind an example where a client of mine said they were frustrated in terms of the counterpart they had been doing done many negotiations with and got to know quite well when it got down to a sticky situation that the other person went to that person's boss and they mm. were quite uh, they were quite offended by that and mm. i i said in the context of this culture you're talking about you've built a very good rapport with this person so now you're in a situation where there might be the potential of conflict which we've touched on in a previous how to episode um, then they want they want to remove that conflict, so they're going to your superior because they don't know that person as well, and they'd be more comfortable in in having difficult conversations or hard objectional uh, conversations with that person, right. because to do otherwise to do with you um, would potentially damage that relationship that they enjoy. So they like the positive aspect of the relationship you built up over years. Um, yet they can have this adversarial relationship with the person above you um, because it just takes out, they don't have to deal with that person on a day-to-day -day basis. So 
that, that hierarchy is is worth in in a positive way that's worth affirming that that's what we always want to fine tune our measuring gauges to what, what what levels of power and influence does your counterpart need in order to move forward also what i said earlier direct or indirect communication i've i've been thrown for many loops in indirect cultures when people told me uh, with a straight face now christian that's an interesting idea and mm. the the literal communicator that i am said yeah, of course it's interesting. I made it so, and I'm glad you recognize how interesting my idea is. So let's move forward. We're ready to make a decision, aren't we? And I did not recognize that the the choice of words was an objection in itself. That interesting was a, a euphemism for mm, you don't realize just yet how idiotic your suggestion is. However, I will not destroy your ego by telling you that to your face i will gently nudge you into that direction maybe you'll recognize it yourself at some point but i in this particular situation will not feed that information directly to you well for me that was a disappointment finding out that what others called interesting wasn't in fact what i thought that word meant right so level of directness level of hierarchy how people build trust all of these factors will influence how you recognize objections and how you handle them. Yeah. We put together a little cheat sheet. Well, I don't want to call it a cheat sheet. We're not cheating. We're calling <laughs> it a worksheet. You're, you're getting, we're getting to work. So we compiled some of the information that we shared here today. Um, also some additional strategies you might find helpful when you're in a global economic context and you're trying to force or uh, elicit a decision either way um, we put it in our worksheet that you can download now so we have a link for you this is where you find it and we'll make it even easier for you we simply put it in the chat box and you will be able to click it um, we will also make sure that all the other channels that we feed um, brett or i will post it underneath as, as a clickable link we want you to go there now or right after this episode concludes because we have a minute or two left. And then you click on that. You can download it. It's for your eyes only. Of course, you can spread it. It's for free. It's okay. Give it to your friends. We were, we're, we're going to be gregarious today. We have no objection to that, do we? No objection at all. Absolutely. Right. Although it is an interesting approach, Christian. It is an interesting is approach. It? <laughs> how specific how now this, this is what i learned so how specifically do you find it interesting well i'm interested in how you think it's adv uh, advantageous that everybody should spread it around are you nuts <laughs> yes i am and in a positive way and i think it would be great for people to um, learn my nuttiness um, by reading our worksheet and hopefully getting a nugget or two or a nut out of it that will help them moving forward. Well, therefore, I have no objection. Well, thank you. All right. <laughs> so, the, 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 does this conclude our does this conclude our episode then? <laughs> See how we did that? That wasn't even planned. I thought that was quite clever of us. <laughs> yeah, that's what we are, right? Well, so, yeah, that's right. Folks, go, go to that link. Go to this link right here. No, that link. Go go to this link right here. And check check the comment box on Facebook, on YouTube, on LinkedIn. If you don't see it this very second, then check back in a minute or so when we manually posted it there. Um, and follow the link. It is free for you. No, it's not free. It's complimentary. Because I think... Complimentary. I think... Without, without compliments. Exactly. Yeah. Any, any final thoughts, Mr. Perry? No. Just uh, if... Uh, as usual follow us on the interwebs um subscribe to our youtube channels and uh get the google juice going get the uh get get the love out there share it with your friends tell people about it if you want to be a guest on the show we're always looking for interesting and informative people because we're sometimes neither interesting or informative and we would like to actually bolster our uh, our credibility out there with the with the with the public space so no matter where you are in the world we would love to hear from you excellent and you better be really interesting
Absolutely. You've got to be interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Two Chaps Make Cultures episode 167 is in the can. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Bye.